So at first, let's come to some theory how it works. So the main idea is basically that you have one ring buffer where the samples are written into and then you are reading out the ring buffer but with a different sampling rate. So either a higher or a lower sampling rate and this is the audio stream you put to the output then in the end. But actually it's not so easy as it sounds uh, but let me explain how it works. So here we have our audio input and then we are doing a mono sum together out from the stereo samples and then we are applying here a 300 hertz high pass filter. But now you might wonder why do we need a high pass filter here. The reason is that I used the ring buffer size of 1000 samples and if you are doing comparison between the sample rate here and the um, sample size of the input buffer you see that actually the lowest possible usable frequency is 100 hertz because you need to guarantee that at least one full wave of your lowest frequency is um, fitting into the uh, buffer. But as we are using only like 1000 samples buffer, we are limited down to 100 hertz. Everything below would not fit into the buffer. This is also not really shifted and it will do some cracking sound every time you go with your read pointer over the write pointer. And now the next thing is you would wonder why do we need basically two read pointers if we just uh, want to uh, read out one audio stream. The thing is every time um, if you're using another speed for the read pointer in comparison with the write pointer you would come to the point where your read pointer is taking over the write pointer. And every time this happens basically you will get a cracking sound because you are um, audio stream will be completely out of phase because your write pointer start already writing new audio to this point. And therefore we are just using two read pointers and you can see that uh, the other read pointer is just 180 degree phase shifted in comparison with the other read pointer. So and then we get basically two different output streams and we are applying an intelligent cross fading between the two streams. Um, to sum up in the end the audio stream uh, which we are applying to the output buffer here. But now you might wonder how is this crossfading working. Let me show you here a timing diagram I have um, drawn. This is for example a pitch shift by 2. So here we have our right pointer. Right pointer is always counting from 0 to n minus 1 and then once again from 0 to n minus 1. And as we are doing a pitch shifting by two, the read pointer is running twice as fast as the write pointer. So you can see in this time frame, where here the write pointer is counting from zero to n minus one, the read pointer is basically counting two times from a zero to n minus one. And then we have always the problem that you would get theoretically some cracking sound if you cross here the n minus one to zero point here. For example, at this position or at this position or at this position. And you know, what we are doing here basically is that we are fading the whole time between the two output streams every time we are crossing here this point. Let's have a look to this point for example. The read pointer is almost reaching the end of the um, output buffer here. And in case this is done here, we are just fading then quite quickly to the second read pointer uh, where the stream is quite in the middle basically. And then uh, the second read pointer is going back um, to the um, other audio stream is done at this point where the second read pointer is basically crossing this point. Um, to be honest, this is not 100% accurate here because we are comparing our read pointer in reality versus the write pointer. But for showing it to you how it works, I think this is looking quite better here. So let me show you what I have done in the code now. So here I have two defines which are actually defining buffer size and the overlap. The overlap is what I have shown you in the slide before is this time where it is just fading from one output stream to the other output stream in terms of um, sample counts here. So then I have here my sample buffer, uh, some variables for the write pointer, for the read pointer, for the shift factor and uh, cross fading. And here I have my variables for the IAR filter. This is my RX and TX buffer as I already used it in my last videos. And then we are coming here to our main function. So here the write pointer is um, started with a zero. Also the read pointer started with a zero, but as I told you, it's a fractional 
read pointer, so we are having a floating point type. This is our shift factor, which is basically here for testing 1.3, which means I will shift up by 30% basically. A uh, shift factor of 2.0 would be like one octave higher and a uh, shift factor of 0 0.5 would be like one octave down. And this is our cross-fading variable here. Then I have a function here for doing the high pass. Um, this is quite straightforward as I have explained it in some of my previous videos. And then let's come to the interrupt handler of the i s DMA hardware. So this is just um, the input buffer where I receive my left sample, right sample. Then I'm applying it to the do pitch shift function and then the return sample. It's just written back to the output buffer here. And now let's have a look what I'm doing here in my do pitch shift function. So here I get my two samples. This is just summed together to mono sum. Then I'm applying here my IRR high pass filler. And this is basically the um, place where the um, summed up sample is written to the buffer with the right pointer. Then um, I want to calculate my two read pointers because my read pointer is basically a fractional number and I want to have an integer number because I cannot index like a fractional value to an array. So I make a round f function here and then I'm just calculating here my 180 degree phase shifted read pointer. Then I'm just reading my two samples out of the buffer. So this is like the normal phase, 180 degree phase shifted. And then here at this point, um, I'm just checking here if my read pointer wants to cross the right pointer or not. And in case yes, then it starts the crossfading here um, that you don't can hear that crossing point between end of the buffer and start of the new buffer. And after the crossfading factor here is calculated, then we are just doing the crossfading function here and summing up the two samples, the two output samples together to sum. And then we are just incrementing here our read pointer and our write pointer and returning the sample and that's all. And now let's hear some examples, how it sounds when I do some shifting up or some shifting down. Test, one, two, one, two, test, test. Test, one, two, one, two, one, two. Test, one, two, one, two. Test, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. Test, one, two, one, two. Test, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching also this video. I hope you liked it. In case you liked it, just uh, press the uh, like button here and see you next time.